Hi there, my name is Shannon Goins and I'm a certified lymphedema therapist here in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area. My specialty is helping with plastic surgery recovery through lymphatic massage, also known as manual lymphatic drainage. Since at this time it's very difficult for most people who've had plastic surgery to get in to see a therapist, I'm making this video to help put out good, solid information with correct technique to help people to help themselves. First of all, I want to say that this is not to be considered a substitute for therapy if a therapist is available. It is not a complete sequence and a lot of shortcuts are being taken so that I can get this all into one quick video. However, doing these steps should be effective and help you to facilitate fluid drainage so that you do feel better. When it's time to get back in to see a therapist, please come and see us. So the first thing that I need to tell you guys is um, that if you have a fat transfer, like a BBL or fat transfer to the breast or to the face, we want to stay off of those areas. So completely avoid them. The second thing is if you are sick, do not do manual lymphatic drainage or lymphatic massage because the lymphatic system is responsible for carrying around your immune system and it is where the immune system wages war if you have an infection of some sort. So it is a contraindication or an absolute no-go if you happen to be sick. So like I said, this is just going to be some of the basics so that you guys can kind of help yourselves. So let's get started. The first thing is that we need to open up where the lymph or fluid is going to be going. And so what happens is that when you have fluid, some swelling somewhere, it goes back into the bloodstream at the heart. And that happens right here in the subclavian or under the collarbone veins. So right in here. So we need to open this first because if this is clogged, all the work that we do subsequently will not work um, until we have a, an open port to go into. So what I want you guys to do is take three fingers like you're doing the Girl Scout pledge and place them right here at this little triangle that's formed by the collarbone and the sternocleidomastoid muscle, this one that stands up like this. So you'll take your three fingers and you're gonna place them here and you're gonna pretend you're a gecko and then you're gonna to stick to the skin. What you don't need to do is go over the skin like this, like you're giving a massage. You also don't wanna press down deep because the lymphatics lie right underneath the skin. So place your fingers here like so, and then pretending you're a gecko, I want you to just stretch the skin towards this elbow. So you'll notice that I'm using the opposite arm from the side of the body I'm working on. So, and you're gonna hold this for about three seconds. So one, two, three, let go. And when you let go, make sure you don't push back, just kind of let up your pressure. And the pressure is this way, again, not down. So you're gonna repeat this on both sides about 20 to 30 times. There's no exact number, but that's a good number because some of you guys want numbers for how many times you should do something. So you can pull and hold for about three seconds, let up, and then just repeat. Then on the other side, three flat fingers, not pointy. Like that. All right, the next step is going to be to clear the lymph nodes in the neck. And the way that we do this is we take a flat hand and we place it along the side of the neck like this. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull straight down to this area. And same technique, pretend you're a gecko. Pull, hold, let go, don't push back up. Pull, hold, let go pull, hold. So that's going to then clear the lymph nodes that are here, which are really important to make sure this stuff stays open. The next step is you need to clear the lymph nodes that are in your axillary area or underarm. And you can do this with a hand. So you can take flat fingers and press, and you're going to press kind of in and up like this. And you can do this about 20 times or so. Again, there's no exact number. You will notice maybe if you've had surgery recently that these areas are tender. So um, that's normal. You're pressing just enough to squeeze the juice out of a grape. That's kind of what you should have in your head. 
Um, you don't want to obliterate the grapes. You don't want to wipe them into uh, non-existence. You just want to squeeze that juice out. Another thing you can do is you can take something like a tennis ball or other type of uh, firm ball and you can place it under here. And when you go to squeeze, it's not a great deal of pressure. It's just enough to feel that you're pushing on the tissue here. And you can move it around too, because these lymph nodes are located all in this region here. So move it around into different positions. Give it about 20, maybe even 30 times. No exact number. When the tenderness is gone, if you have tenderness, that's usually a good sign that you're ready to move on. Repeat this on the other side. Next, we're going to do the lymph nodes that are located in the groin area. So I'm gonna stand up to show you this. All right, so here is where my leg ends and where my body ends. And this is the area that we are targeting. So you're gonna take a flat hand. You're gonna press up in this way. Again, imagining that there are grapes in there and you want to just squeeze that juice out. And you can repeat this on both sides about 20 to 30 times. Now, I forgot to mention that if you are having a face or if you've had a facelift, um, the area under the underarms and the area in the groin are not necessary for you, so you can skip that part. But if you've had any work done on the rest of your body, you need to be sure to do those, including the back of your body. So be sure that you go through those steps. All right, now once we've cleared our lymph nodes, the next thing we need to do is to move our skin and pull that fluid towards our lymph nodes. Whenever the fluid gets to the lymph nodes, whether it's in the underarms or it's in the groin, that fluid is then transported up here to the subclavian veins where it's returned to the bloodstream and uh, then is filtered out by the liver and peed out by the kidneys. So um, in order to do that, what we're going to do is, uh, much like what we did on our neck, we are going to take a flat hand again, and we are going to place it on the skin. I'm going to do this right here so that you can see this little mole. Hopefully it's visible. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull towards an area. Now this is, um, this is just an example here, um, not necessarily somewhere that you've had surgery, but just watch this mole if you can see it. So I'm going to pull and tug. So I'm doing that same technique. Now, in this particular case, um, I'm just, I'm working around here, but many of you might be working on your sides. So let me show you what it looks like on the side. So from the belly button up is um, gonna go towards the underarms and everything is going to split down the, the body like this. So everything in this quadrant goes here. Everything in this quadrant goes here. Everything in this quadrant goes there. Everything in that quadrant goes there. So you can even use two hands. And then you grab your skin and you just tug upwards. Same thing. So you can repeat this usually about seven to 10 times in that area. And the pattern that you're going to want to do, and I'm trying to uh, stay, stay modest here for the video, but what you're going to do if you're aiming towards here, so this quadrant of the body, so from my belly button over this way, goes this way, um, you're going to start nearest to your armpit and you're going to clear this by doing it seven to ten times. And then you're going to step down further away. So what we're doing is we're clearing an area so that there's room for this fluid to move up. So we'll go to here. We'll repeat that seven to 10 times. And then we'll go to here. It's hard to do over the clothing. And when it's comfortable for you to do with both hands, please do. All right. Likewise, from the belly button down goes this way. So we're gonna then do this way down to the lymph nodes in the groin. All right. And then for, let's say you've had, um, you've had surgery like on your thighs or you've had, it, um, you've had like a brachioplasty. So what we do there is we grab that skin and we pull it up towards the lymph nodes. So same thing. And again, we're not sliding over the skin. We are a gecko and we're gonna pull and tug. And it's really important here to make sure 
that we have a pause phase, you know? So now I do it a lot quicker because it's what I do, but for you guys, I want you to make sure you give it a good several seconds. So pull, one, two, three, let go. Don't shoot it backwards. Like that. All right, for the arms, the arms are gonna go this way. So if you've had a brachioplasty, like so. All right, so let me talk really quickly about what happens when you have like a tummy tuck or a body lift. So normally our watersheds, I shouldn't have sat down. <laughs> normally our watershed, which is the area where the fluid drains. So if you can imagine on my body, this is a mountain peak. And if rain were to come down, it would roll this way or it would roll that way. That's a watershed where the, where the water is gonna go, the fluid is gonna go. So if we have a tummy tuck, they take out like a section of our skin and then we pull it down to that scar line. So um, basically the belly button line has shifted. So in that case, everything from that scar has to move upwards. Now, if you don't have a vertical scar, it's gonna be a lot easier to get the fluid from the um, big horizontal scar going from hip to hip up to the underarm because that's still naturally one watershed. If you do have a vertical scar here though, um, you are actually dealing with part of the watershed that naturally goes down. That's what people like me specialize in. That's uh, what we get our advanced training for. So it is possible to get the fluid to go up, but it is a little bit more difficult. Um, and what you're gonna wanna do is focus on pulling that fluid this way. So, and focus on spending some time, especially right in here. Um, just give it some extra strokes. Uh, that should hopefully help. But don't get too frustrated if that's the case. So um, whenever you have a big scar, the fluid will never cross that scar right after surgery because it's all been disrupted. So you're forced to route it in a pattern that is available, even if it's not ideal. Same thing goes on the back of the body. So anything from a, um, a scar for the, uh, like a body lift, uh, that's going to have to go above the scar. Um, so let's talk about the back of the body now, because I kind of skipped over that. So, um, when we are doing lymphatic drainage, we are creating a vacuum all the way from when we start doing this. So we're creating a vacuum that's going to helpfully, uh, hopefully pull this fluid from everywhere in the body. When I'm working on people, I know this happens because I'll work here and people are like, should I be feeling that in my feet? And that is a totally normal thing. Even though I've gotten nowhere near their feet, I've only just begun. So we really do create a vacuum. If you are by yourself and you don't have anybody to do this for you, then you're gonna make a best effort to get to your back. So, but trust me, it's still working. So we're gonna go through the front sequence. So we'll be here, here, and in the groin. And then just like with the, uh, just like with the front, we're gonna be pulling everything from basically the belly button line, um, the belly button line area up to the armpits. So, you know, I mean, I can't reach very far back this way, but I can get some of that skin. And you know, you're still tugging. If you're tugging here, it's pulling way back here along the spine. So you just keep pulling up like that. Now, if you've got, uh, if you've had no tummy tuck, so from the belly button line around down is gonna come around the hip to the groin. So you'll just, you know, like I said, remember that you guys need to pause a good long while here, but you're gonna route that down to here. Okay, so, uh, and keeping in mind that if you've had a BBL, stay off of where they've done the fat injections because you don't want to disturb that fat. That really requires some advanced training and a lot of um, careful technique to even work on that at all. So, um, that covers that. Um, it is not a bad idea to also periodically go back through and purge your lymph nodes. So go back into your underarm. You can even use a fist here if you'd like. Um, go back into your arm, underarm and purge that. Go back into the groin and do the swooping motions. And you can also clear the terminals. Again, it's called the terminals up here because it's the end point or terminus of the lymphatic system. All right. Well, hopefully this has been helpful and uh, I hope that you guys make a lot of comments on the video and uh, best of luck with everyone. I look forward to seeing you back in my practice and everyone else's practices when everything kind of normalizes. 
Thanks again. Bye-bye.